Hi viewers, another episode of Guest with Nazir. Today's personality has a lot of skills, politics, business, charity work, and so much. Today's special guest is Nasir Meer. Welcome in our show. Thank you, uh, Mr. Nazir. Uh, very nice of you and thank you for inviting me in your um, very special program. Please tell our viewers, Nasser, about your early days and childhood. Well, I was born in uh, Punjab, uh, district Gujarat, Jalalpur, Jatta. And um, basic education, I had from Jalalpur, Jatta. Then uh, I went to Gujarat in college. And while I was in college, I started a small business as well. So I've been a businessman all my life. I say a businessman by default. Uh, then I carry on my education, uh, did in commerce. Uh, for one year, I went to Lahore uh, for a, another education purpose and another degree there. Then I went to a Swedish college where I did my three year uh, uh, diploma in uh, uh, electrical. Uh, came back into a commerce college because I wanted to complete my. MBA, but unfortunately, my pa father passed away and couldn't complete. Then I involved more into business. Uh, after business, I got married uh, with a British citizen and my cousin. Obviously, I have no shame to say she's my first cousin. Yeah. <laughs> and then I came over uh, and started a business in 1990. Please tell uh, Nasser, your especially college days, that uh, there was also a lot of political activities in the colleges in Pakistan. So what kind of activities those were and which political party you used to stand for? Uh, basically, uh, Nazir Sabah was a, a freelance uh, politician. Uh, I did not join any a political party. Affiliation was with the uh, PPP, Pakistan People's Party, and I was a, a great admirer of Zulfkar Ali Bhutto. At that time, I met uh, Bhutto Saab twice. Uh, I became a first uh, PR, uh, CR class representative. And uh, at the moment, the very seasonal senior politician, Mr. Chaudhry Shujat, uh, I, I had a first oath from him. And I was 17 years old. So since then, I am involved in, uh, in, in politics. And meanwhile, I'm doing business as well. We'll come to the politics. At the moment in Pakistan, there is a, a very curtailed political activities in the colleges and the universities. Mm. Do you think that the government should allow the political activities within the institutions? I'm against this. After all the experience, um, Student Uni was banned uh, in uh, Ziaulak uh, uh, when he came, uh, when he took over the uh, Bhutto government. Uh, and to be honest with you, uh, my, my opinion is uh, shouldn't be allowed any uh, political activities in the colleges and universities. But student union is for the rights of the students and at the same time, it is a political nursery for the country. So don't you think that we are going to stop the uh, good education and political, uh, I will say, training for the uh, fresh generation or the new generation? Um, um, Mr. Nazir, the thing is, you know, in Pakistan, it's a different scenario. And here is a different scenario. It, at our time, uh, the student union was uh, misusing the power. So I'm talking about the Pakistan. If you talk about the Pakistan student union, if you talk about here, yes, student union are for the right of the students, uh, what they can do, what they want to do, what the uh, subjects and everything. But in Pakistan, uh, my experience is uh, the student union uh, misuse the power. So, but if somebody is misusing the power, it doesn't mean that we will, with the one stake, we will ban everybody. So it means there needs to be reforms in the system. Because uh, uh, in Pakistan, there are lots of feudalism in lots of areas. Uh, though this, uh, uh, at the moment, is a political government, uh, Mr. Imran Khan, I wanted to bring lots of forms in uh, political system and in colleges and uh, in, in universities. He said he's going to allow uni uh, uh, student unions. But that's time will tell. 
the decision is right or wrong. So we're coming back to the UK. So which year you came to the United Kingdom? In 1990, 89, uh, 24th of August, 89. So what was your first experience? Because people have some issues. It is a big transformation in your life, coming from Pakistan, different language, different culture. So, and I believe you came to Sheffield. I came in Sheffield, but let me tell you, uh, Sab, I came in uh, England as a visitor in 1986. I stayed here about two months uh, and then went back because I was only a, a visitor. And then after I got married, I came back in 1989, 24 August. Uh, England, I always say, is, a, is the best civilized country. Uh, I was very English speaking at that time. Uh, my father-in-law, uh, Mr. Hussain, was well known a businessman in Sheffield. Uh, also, my brother, Sheikh Khalid, were already here and they supported me uh, and always found it's the best country to live because as long you are straight, you don't violate the, the law of the country and it's, it's the best way. And so in the business side, so because your family was already in the business, so it means you have some people who can guide you. So mm -hmm. what was your first business here? I opened the first, uh, obviously, because my family was in clothing business. And I opened my first shop in Dunnington, uh, near Workshop. And that was a clothes shop called Libas, I mean clothing. Then from there, uh, uh, I researched about the ladies' shoes side. And I opened a one lady shoe shop. I did the market at that time. Hmm. It was very successful, the Thosby market we used to go. Uh, then I opened my first shoe shop in Workshop and then established in, in a whole Yorkshire, uh, my shoe, shoe business as a soft, uh, shoe zone. So I was very, very successful at that time. So do you visit Pakistan quite often or? Just... I do. I do go every year uh, because uh, uh, my parents are buried there, uh, they passed away now. Uh, my sisters are there, my childhood friends are there, and I do go to Pakistan every year uh, to meet and greet, because obviously that's uh, it's a ground, and that's a place where I go. And we, you, it is impossible to leave and forget your birthplace. So, what is your favorite place there in Pakistan? If you recommend allow our viewers, if whole somebody Pakistan, wants to, whole Pakistan is my favorite. Wherever you go, I love it. But sometimes you have a favorite city or a place you visit quite often. Uh, Lahore, uh, I love to stay there because it's a lot social. Very historical. I'm city. very active in everything. So I like uh, a busy life. My, my, uh, I've always said I got the cup, tea cup in, in my home where I drink tea every morning. He says you, my life would be empty without stress. So I like busy life. So. That's interesting and good, uh, I think, to keep yourself busy. Mm -hmm. So at the same time, with the business, you were involved in politics. Mm -hmm. Please tell our viewers about your first interaction with the present Prime Minister Imran Khan. You uh, met him in Radhram. So please tell your experience to our viewers. And let me tell you, uh, Nazi Saab, uh, I met Imran Khan uh, 28, 29 years ago when he had his first a uh, Shaukat Hanam program I went in Manchester. Uh, myself and my father was involved in this with the other friends. And I was on the front table. And since then, uh, I supported uh, um, a Shaukat Hanam, is, uh, the, the best and biggest cancer hospital in, in Asia. Uh, from there, he started in Amal University, and I was involved in Amal University with Sabda Dajangir and Ilmusar and everyone's. And from there, he started a party 23 years ago. And uh, I was always admire him. He's an honest, genuine person. And he has proven that whatever he promised, uh, whatever he dream, uh, whatever he imagined, uh, his imagination is, is always says, it is all about imagination. And the God has always been very kind with him. And he opened Shokat Hanam Hospital. He started in Namal University, he's growing uh, by the day, and he came in politi politi politics, and now he's the Prime Minister of the Pakistan. So don't you think that uh, running a 
a charitable trust and institution and running a country, there are two different experiences. Um, what I uh, see in the, how the Hansa works, when, uh, if you remember, if you went to, to Lahore, you opened a pay center. There was a multi-story shopping center in Lahore. Uh, that was Imran Han's initiative. But what, uh, he, how he works, he opened a shokatanam, he give to management. He, make, he will make a team and he will let the team to do their own jobs. So that's how he built the party. He trusts his uh, party members, he let them grow and let them lead. And same, in, I asked him a question one day, Hasab, how are you going to change uh, for 35 year regime and uh, well, the corrupt and corrupt system uh, that the been developed? And he says, I will start from the top. If top's okay, the bottom will be all right. So he's, he's doing really well. But at the moment, there's a lot of reshuffle in the cabinet, and at the same time, the inflation is there and the economic challenges are there. And at the same time, uh, I'm not a critic, but I have a question for you, that there was a biggest project in the KPK about the bus system. Still, they could not complete it. The, it will be completed because uh, what we believe in, what Hansa believe in, to work with our own money instead of keep borrowing the money. Yes, we are borrowing the money at the moment because there's too many debts to pay. The money we're borrowing for IMF is just to pay the debts back. But that project is also with the uh, borrowing money from the Asian bank. Yes, on, uh, on a low budget. And we have a target, once it's completed, once it's start running, we have a plan B to how to gonna pay back. So everything the hands are doing, everything the cabinets are doing, we, we have regular meetings, so how to pay back? The plan is, if to borrow the 10 pound, we should have a plan to pay back the 10 pound. Not to borrow again and again and again. And we watch, if the God gave me good health, and if you get a chance to complete this five year, things will be different. Now, at the moment, overseas Pakistanis, they have a lot of support for present government. Mm -hmm. And you have been given a role. Please tell our viewers, what is your role and how you are going to help uh, overseas Pakistan, especially from Punjab? Uh, in Punjab, uh, there is OPC, Overseas Pakistani Commission Punjab. Initiative was uh, the ex-government when uh, the current uh, governor of Punjab, it was a governor at that time, uh, Chaudhry Sarvasab, it was his initiative and he started uh, Overseas Pakistani Commission to send the complaints direct to the commission so commission can resolve the problems. You know that in overseas, there's just too many issues. There's every day words, a, a Kabza mafia, there's bank cases, a false allegations. So now this government, uh, they appointed a new uh, vice chair, Vaseem uh, Akhtar uh, in Lahore, and the chairman, is uh, Chief Minister Punjab, Usman Bazdor. And in, in, in their books, uh, in the Constitution, Punjab Constitution, uh, 2014, uh, it was allow them to make advisory council in overseas. Because lots of people, lots of overseas, they can't go to Pakistan, they can't go every day. So they can sit here and deal with, with their uh, uh, representatives. So what so, is the role of the advisory council? So they're going to work directly with the public or they're going to give mm -hmm. the advice or help the people? Just they have like a, you, we may say, the ambassador of that similar uh, mm -hmm. authority and they will going to assist them. People come to us and we have a portal, a Overseas Pakistan Commission portal, and they put the complaint on the portal or we help them to put the complaint on. The complaint go into Lahore, our head office. We have lots of staff working there. From there, this current um, vice chair, Seem Rame, he made uh, committees uh, in each district. There are 36 districts in Punjab. 29 has been completed. And each district, we have a chairman, we have vice chairman, we have a deputy commissioner, we have a DPO involved. So that we have a meeting every two weeks. So whatever case, we send it to Lahore. They send it to the uh, 
rel uh, relative uh, uh, district and they deal with them. Within two weeks, they reply us back so what the current situation of the case. So you don't need to go to Pakistan. You can come to us. We are basically messenger. We are advisory council. We advise them and we send the case forward. So instead of then running out to Pakistan. So the portal is there and- The portal is there. So the next question, there's a debate there that the these institutions are already working. If we will look at the institutions for overseas Pakistanis, there's OPF, there's a Punjab, and then if we will, at the same time, we look at the, uh, there is also, you know, uh, voluntary organizations there. But the issue is that where are the powers to solve the problems? Because if we will talk to the a complainant or the applicant, a lot of people complain that their complaint goes to bureaucracy from one table to another, and there is no solution. So do you think that the government should introduce more powers to these bodies? Yes, uh, uh, first of all, I need to tell you here, when they made the advisory council, they made the uh, international convener, Makhdoum Tariq Mahmoud al Hassan, uh, is uh, based in Huddersfield. Uh, then uh, he made 32 people advisory council, and we all uh, choose to become a chairman. So he's a chairman of OPC UK. I'm a vice chairman of Overseas Pakistani uh, Commission, Punjab, in the north of England, from starting from East Midland to Northwest. So, because these, these people are very experienced, so we send the cases there, we chase them. And now, with the help of Jodhri uh, Fusim uh, vice chair, uh, judiciary allocated the three judges, they separated the three courts for overseas courts. So we pushing the overseas courts in taking the overseas cases. Instead of giving three, four, five months date, they give it weekly. I involved with two, three cases. But of course, this is in the high court, but the real problem is in the lower judiciary. If I remember in the previous government, there was a proposal from the ex uh, uh, chairman overseas Pakistani foundation, Baris Ramjad Malik. He has given suggestion that there should be a, a special court at the lower level at every district for the overseas Pakistanis. Absolutely. Amjad Malik uh, did a wonderful job at his time. He's made out the constitution and everything. I admire him. And uh, even though he's not in our government, he's, he's, he's a, a different league. But I, whenever I need advice, I do ask him because he's a, he's a wonderful person and he did lots of hard work for OPC uh, Punjab and for OP, uh, OPF. Uh, the Amjan Malik uh, proposals in the, uh, we took into consideration and now the, the Chief Justice Lahore High Court sent the letter and to lower court that any case coming as an overseas do got to finish within, within three months or six months, but the dates they got to be one week. So instead of three months, four months dates, now they're getting one week date. But there is a debatable day. topic because some people, you know, the locals are complaining that if somebody's overseas, why is getting a special treatment? That's a debatable topic. We'll, we'll discuss this sometime in later. Yeah. But now we are moving forward. What do you think about this proposal that the overseas Pakistanis all over the world, they should have some kind of representation within the Senate and within the National Assembly of Pakistan? We are fighting for that and uh, uh, PTI government, uh, uh, in, is uh, almost everything ready to, you have a right to vote in Pakistan. And yes, we are fighting. Uh, we have a debate going on every day uh, with the leadership that we should uh, have at least two uh, people, two MNA, and each province we should have at least four MPA from overseas. So they need to, we be interesting uh, we supported Pakistan, we will support Pakistan, but all the overseas and current government, especially Mr. Imran Khan, he has my, in every speech, he says, the overseas are my, uh, are my assets. So uh, now is the real time, and they got to appreciate the overseas as well. Uh, a very small question. So your body is represented by the Usman Purzar Saab, mm. the Chief Minister Punjab. So when he's visiting United Kingdom? Uh, is visible due actually in December, but uh, some um, urgent uh, matters came and he cancelled his visit. Uh, we hoping uh, in April sometime we're going to visit because we a couple of projects here and a couple of people in medical side they want to donate in uh, air ambulance and everything. So everything ready.
So we were just waiting for him to work, in, work with his team. So what is your message for our viewers who are watching us today, especially overseas Pakistanis who have issues within the Punjab? So what is your uh, short and brief message for them? OPC, Overseas Pakistan Commission, uh, we are here to create uh, awareness. Uh, if you have any problem in Punjab, uh, any overseas Pakistani, please uh, get in touch with our team, myself. Um, I'm available all the time. And uh, we will try our very best to resolve your issues. And we, we will go out of the way to help our overseas brothers and sisters. We will share your website page on our screens also for viewers ease. So if somebody has issues, they can contact your team or By directly they can lodge a, a, a complaint or issue directly uh, to the Let morning. me tell you, Aziz Sabano, in short time, uh, we have a hotline, we have a telephone numbers available 24 hours. So if anybody got any issue in Pakistan, not just uh, uh, land and other things in the banks, in the police, uh, personal matters, you can discuss everything. In, in Here in UK, there are lots of overseas Pakistan have issues here, in Nadra, a card and passport, and we also are helping because I have another uh, person from the Sheffield, uh, uh, Mr. Shah, in is a part of my team, and in Northwest, uh, North of England, I have eight members in my team, and we are here. We are here to help uh, people. You're doing a wonderful job. Mr. Nasser Mead, thank you very much for joining us, and I hope uh, you have enjoyed uh, our uh, today's sitting. Mr. C, multi appreciate, and you are doing a wonderful job. And thank you very much for taking me on board and taking this interview. So it's, it's the whole uh, reason is to create awareness about OPC. And thank you very much again. Viewers, thank you very much for watching us. Keep watching Sheffield Live. And I hope we will keep continuing these shows in coming days. Thank you.